Hey guys, it's Fool's Errand, and after dragging myself out of development hell, I finally managed to bring myself to make a new video. This video is going to be over a subject I have been meaning to talk about for a while, cybernetics. Somewhat in general, but mostly in a gaming context. This subject came to mind when watching a press conference on Elon Musk's Neuralink and the ramifications such tech would mean. A lot of people have probably heard of the Neuralink as Elon's brain interface tech but I'll go a little deeper into it to give people a better idea of how it works. The Neuralink is a device whose size is somewhere between a quarter and a half dollar, and when completed takes up space where a piece of skull would be, and lays flush with the skull under the skin. The Neuralink uses about a thousand small wires that are implanted into the brain under the device and can both read signals from the brain as well as send impulses into the brain. Though currently, the sending function is meant more in a sense of neuron stimulation to fight Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative issues. The part that interests me was something that was shown at the press conference using test animals, and that was reading brain signals to calculate movement. We uh, take the, the readings from the neurons and we try to predict the posi position of the joints. Um, and so we say we have the predicted position of the joints and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints, you can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy. If this works as intended, it would be a fantastic leap for people using prosthetics to just put a robotic replacement on someone and having it move with intent, just like you would a real arm, would bring us one step closer to giving these people back their lives after something tragic happens. The tech does have limitations, I noticed. One issue is that the Neuralink can only be installed to one part of the brain. In his conference, he showed a pig with a Neuralink plugged into the nose part of the brain, while another had it in the motor control part of the brain. So the Neuralink seems to be a one function per implant. The other glaring issue is one that comes up with pacemakers all the time infection. Whether it being due to accidental contamination during a procedure or just getting infected later, infections do occur and while fixed up with antibiotics, having an infection so close to the brain gives me pause. But these issues will just have to be handled. Infection was such a problem they wouldn't bother with implants at all. This tech is still leaps and bounds ahead of where we were and I have high hopes. Elon has even said that they might even begin human tests by late this year. But on to why I wanted to talk about this. What would this tech mean for the consumer? The most relevant part of this tech would be the motor control implant. While being able to be used for prosthetics, it can also be used in a virtual setting. While some enterprising individuals could maybe work a use in traditional games, I am mostly talking about VR. While VR is currently suffering several bottlenecks, one of the big ones on the tech side is play space and freedom of movement. If you could just lay on your bed and move a character through a virtual world with intent instead of physical movement, this would open up whole new worlds of possibilities. Most of these ideas are pipe dreams, of course. Asking people to get brain surgery for gaming is a colossal ask. There's also the issue of still moving while playing. In a tense moment, you may forget to use intent instead of actually move your body. Let's not even get started on the idea of tech that temporarily paralyzes you to keep you from moving. I can see it now. Man starves to death as gaming system fails to disengage. Never mind the can of worms that would happen if the government wanted control of such tech. But as you can see what I'm getting at, we are still a few decades from full dive virtual reality. You would still need a helmet. It would still feel confining as willing to move but not moving would be hard, and that's if such a thought process can even be read by the implant. And if people go through with it, there is no way to guarantee people would even try to take advantage of the tech for such a thing. I would volunteer. For a Cybertruck. You'll just have to see what comes of the tech over the following years, see where it goes. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. Tell me what you think in the comments. Also, feel free to give feedback. I make this content for you guys, and I want to know how to improve it. If you have any suggestions on what I should cover next time, by all means. Please, by all means. I'm terrible at ideas. And if you want to follow me elsewhere, I have several places I can be found. Links in the description.
Lastly, I would like to apologize for taking so long to make a new video. I'm still trying to get my work line streamlined so that I can post more regularly. Hopefully I can at least manage some form of regularity. And that's all. See you guys later.